guys, so today I'm going to be testing the new i5 13600K. I'm excited to see what kind of performance I get when I pair this GPU and the CPU together. I will be testing it in my H5 Elite case that I've been using. I will be using the i5 12600K as a reference to see how much of an improvement the 13600K is. Should be pretty sickle mode. <laughs> First, we're gonna run the Cinebench test. It's a CPU benchmark test. After that, we'll run a 3D mark test, the Firestrike Extreme test to be exact. We'll compare scores. Then we're gonna do the user benchmark test, see what scores we get. After that, we're gonna run some stress tests. I'll be using Furmark to stress test the GPU and the CPU. Then I'll run the Shadow, the Tomb Raider benchmark test and the Cyberpunk benchmark test. And then finally, we'll do some gaming. We'll see what kind of scores we get, what kind of temps we get. Should be pretty sickle mode. Hold on, I just need a little bit of motivation. So when you compare the i5-12600K versus the 13600K, right off the bat, you're comparing Alder Lake versus Raptor Lake. Raptor Lake is super sick cause it's Raptor Lake. So it's already better. I just like Raptors. Maybe. Raptor. The 12600K, you're gonna get 10 cores, 16 threads versus the 13600K that has 14 cores, 20 threads. So that should help when you do a lot of multitasking or CPU heavy workloads. You also get a higher max turbo frequency at 5.1 gigahertz versus 4.9 gigahertz. If you look at the power, the max turbo power, the i5-13600K can use more power than the 12600K, so 180 watts of power versus 150 watts. Now remember, with great power comes great responsibility which means you're responsible for making sure your cooler is properly cooling your new processor because it uses more power. One thing that's interesting to note as well, if you're gonna be using DDR5 RAM, the 12600K will only support up to 4800 megahertz and the 13600K will support up to 5600 megahertz. They both support the same amount of RAM. So just be aware if you're buying fancier RAM or faster speed DDR5 RAM. All right, so first test we're running is gonna be the Cinebench test. The way Cinebench puts it is the real world test suite to evaluate your computer's performance capabilities. It's a good way to compare processors to see how they perform. So we'll see how much of a performance increase the 13600K has over the 12600K. So with more power, we're probably gonna get more heat. I assume we're gonna get a better score, but let's see what happens. A Krusty Krab pizza is the pizza for you and me. So the max temp on the 13600K was 80 degrees Celsius versus 54 degrees Celsius on the 12600K. The fact that the 13600K can use more power means it's gonna generate a lot more heat. The upside of that is that you did score way better. So I got 24,022 on the 13600K and on the 12600K I got 17,227. That's a pretty crazy increase from last year's model. Now on the i9-12900K when I ran the Cinebench test, I got 26,958. So this new i5-13600K isn't far behind. It's, it's pretty impressive because the i5 isn't really meant for a lot of CPU intensive workloads such as video editing, 3D rendering, stuff like that. Historically, it's been known to be a good entry-level gaming CPU. So the fact that it's improved that much from one generation is pretty cool. Typically, Intel does very incremental upgrades. Going back to the i5-8600K, the upgrade to the 9th gen was a mere 3% in speed. The 10th gen was only a 1% increase, while the 11th gen saw a better 8% increase, and the last two generations have seen a 10 and 11% increase in speed. So it's not as bad as it used to be. Maybe AMD is putting some pressure on Intel to make processors worth the upgrade? Who knows? On the 13th generation, I think Intel focused more on the workstation side. I don't anticipate the gaming side to be as great of an improvement. You get more heat, but you get better performance. If you think you're gonna be doing CPU heavy workloads, I would advise you get a better cooler. I'm using a dual fan radiator water cooler. You probably want a triple fan water cooler if you're gonna be doing workloads on the 13600K. So this test is the Firestrike Extreme test. So it'll give us a score, it'll give us temps. We'll figure out how it compares to the 12600K. So now that the test is done, on the 13600K I got 30,389 points versus the 12600K I got 27,700. 138 points. This is interesting because it's a gaming benchmark test and there's a noticeable difference in, in score as well as FPS because if you're looking at the 13600K, the combined test FPS is 70.75 FPS versus the 12600K, it's 53.60 FPS. A difference of 20 frames per second is actually 
significant. You'll be able to see a difference if you're playing a game at 60 frames per second or 40 frames, you'll definitely be able to tell. Using the same GPU and then using last year's i5 versus this year's i5 and getting 20 frames per second better is actually pretty impressive. Heat is a big difference, 62 degrees Celsius versus 48 degrees Celsius on the 12600K. So it seems to be a common theme. It looks like it's getting hotter because it's using more power. But yeah, those are the scores for Firestrike Extreme. Let's move on to the user benchmark test. For the 13th gen, I got 412% in gaming, 122% for desktop and 452 in workstation versus 381% for gaming, 116 for desktop, and 381 for workstation on the 12th gen. I think the biggest increase I saw was in workstation. Makes sense, you're getting a processor that can handle more power, it has more cores, it should be able to handle multitasking and heavy CPU workloads better. But yeah, those are the results for the user benchmark test. I'm gonna run the stress test on the GPU and the CPU at the same time to generate the maximum amount of heat I can. I'll record the max temp for both and hopefully nothing bad happens. It is getting toasty in here. When I started these tests, it was like 68 degrees in here. It's now 76 and the test is done. The 13600K hit a max temperature of 86 degrees Celsius versus 61 degrees Celsius on the 12600K. That's a difference of about 25 degrees. Like I said, you probably want a better cooler for this processor. 86 degrees isn't good. It's not the worst, but it's also not good. But yeah, there's the Furmark test. If you like sour crap, this is super sour. It's delicious. <laughs> so we had a total of 36,498 on the 13600K versus 30,795 on the 12600K. Average FPS on the 13th gen is 233 versus 196 on the 12th gen. So you did see a significant increase when you went with a better processor. That could be because this game is more CPU dependent versus GPU dependent. I actually saw a bigger difference between upgrading your processor versus actually upgrading the 3080 to a 4080, which is kind of weird because typically when gaming, when you upgrade your GPU, you see a bigger difference than when you upgrade your CPU. So pretty interesting. So when it comes to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it looks like your CPU is very important. It looks like it's more of a CPU dependent game probably because of all the stuff happening in the background. But yeah, wasn't expecting that. This room is heating up. It's almost, it's nine degrees hotter in this room than when I started running my benchmarks. Hopefully it doesn't get much hotter. I don't want it to affect the temps and everything, but the computer is heating up pretty good. So yeah. So that's the Tomb Raider benchmark test. So with the Cyberpunk test, with ray tracing on and ray tracing off, the processor really had zero effect on this game, which is a different story between Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Cyberpunk. With ray tracing on, the 13th gen got up about 92 frames per second versus 91 frames per second on the 12th gen. With ray tracing off, with both processors, I got 108 frames per second average. It looks like Cyberpunk is more of a GPU dependent game. You won't see any difference between a 12600K and a 13600K. So if that's the game you play, it looks like your GPU is the most important. And this is ultra everything. So if you're trying to get closer to 144 frames per second to get the smoothest gameplay with your monitor, you may need to turn down some of those settings because at ultra settings, with ray tracing on, you're not even getting 100 frames per second. And with it off, you're getting 108. Even with the 4080, you're still not able to get 144 frames per second, which is kind of disappointing but it just shows that Cyberpunk is a very GPU power hungry game. So with a Cyberpunk benchmark, there's zero difference between the processors. All right, let's move on. So after playing the Cyberpunk and GTA 5, once again, the 13600K was at 63 degrees Celsius versus 50 degrees on the 12600K. So you did get a hotter temp. I did not see a performance decrease when going with the 12600K. So it looks like if you're using a 4080 with the 13600K or 12600K, you won't see a difference in performance when it comes to gaming. Even though there's a difference in the Tomb Raider benchmark, if you're doing 1440p, you still average more than 144 frames per second. So with the naked eye, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So what does this mean? As far as the gaming performance between the i5 13600K and the 600k it looks like there's minimal difference according to user benchmark as far as the gaming benchmarks go it says you should see about a 13 percent increase in your gaming performance now i did see that with like i said the tomb raider benchmark but i didn't really see it with gta 5 or with uh cyberpunk 
where I saw that 13600K XL was in our Cinebench benchmark. I actually did see it perform better in the Firestrike Extreme test, a little under 3,000 points, but it doesn't look like to the naked eye you'll be able to actually see the difference that you get. Final verdict with the 13600K. If you have a 12600K, it's I don't think it's worth the upgrade to the 13600K. That being said, the 13600K is an amazing gaming processor. If you don't already have a 12600K or if you're looking to upgrade it, the 13600K is a perfect gaming processor. Now that it has more cores and it can handle more power, it's actually a pretty good all-around processor. It does give you better performance, but it also produces more heat. If you had a 12600K, a dual fan radiator would definitely be enough. I never ran into scenario during any of the benchmarks and stress tests I ran on that processor where I thought heat would be an issue. Now with a 13600K that was a different story. Because it has a max turbo wattage of 181 watts it does get pretty warm. It was actually heating up this entire room. It, it heated it up by 9 degrees. If you're buying a 13600K and you think you're going to be doing CPU heavy workloads I definitely would recommend a triple fan radiator because of the amount of heat that it generates. A dual fan radiator was perfectly fine for the 12th Gen i5 but for the the 13600K, I don't think it's gonna cut it. At least I wouldn't feel comfortable with the processor being in the high 80s, closer to 90 degrees under heavy load. All right, well, looks like that's about everything. Now that I have a 4080, I am gonna be running more tests. I'm gonna be trying different configurations. Anyways, it looks like my job's done here. See you guys later. My brain is fried. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm.